Okay, let's start. Okay, and uh, today we are talking about uh, Yang Zhu. Um, probably a lot of people, some people not heard about uh, this uh, philosopher, but I think it's, it's important to introduce if you are interested in the Taoism philosopher, philosophy. So before going that, let's go through uh, the schedule. Uh, today is our third time in this year. So we have go through the great learning, which is a Confucian teaching. And the last week we talked about Mozi, it's the so-called the first the op opponent of Confucius. Um, this week we're talking about Yang Zhu, okay? And the title is the first phase of Taoism based on the Feng Yulan's argument. Um, is anybody, uh, can you unzoom, uh, un, sorry, un, uh, mute, uh, everybody mute yourself? Or, uh, yeah, please, thank you. Okay. So, and the next week we are going to talk about the school of uh, names and the more popular name, probably the Chinese sophist or Chinese uh, logician, uh, dialection, okay, so, uh, that's next week. Then we are going uh, further on the Moism and other thing. And that's just a tentative uh, schedule. And I believe Pin has something to talk about uh, in February. So uh, we will uh, insert the schedule. So it's basics I will follow the Feng Yulan's uh, uh, his, uh, brief history, history of Chinese philosophy. Uh, from time to time, I will insert, for example, Pin will have some of his subject. And we also have uh, uh, Indian philosophy. And also, again, I just want to announce one more time. Also, again, anyone has idea or something want to present about Asian philosophy, uh, please contact me. So uh, I will put you, we will uh, work on the detail that we can uh, work together. So we will bring uh, more, um, uh, diversity in the in this meetup. Uh, James Cook, please. I realize you're skipping around now, but I did have a question uh, this time. The uh, Yangzhu was given as the first phase of Taoism, but yet on the other hand, I've always been taught that uh, Lao Tzu was the the, the 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 legend of Lao Tzu being requested to put down his ideas and preserve his ideas for, the, for posterity, and that that was the beginning of Taoism. So what, what it is, uh, how, how, how do we understand um, this lesson from Feng Yulan that uh, the first phase is actually uh, originated by Yang Zhu? Is this concrete? Is this extremely concrete, this assertion that uh, it is the first phase and that uh, Lao Tzu is the second phase. Uh, uh, thank you, James. And I plan, I know you, uh, someone will ask this question and then uh, uh, I plan to put this question on the last. So, but <laughs> unfortunately you bring up first. So, but anyway, you know, that means you are insightful. So uh, that's fine. And uh, I think that's go through this one and that definitely that's a question. Okay. So uh, we can talk about this and so that's officially start. And then uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, people here and then most are the, not the first time, but I, I will assume uh, there are some have no idea or not coming on the first time, uh, just join today for the first time. So I will do spend another 10 minutes to quickly review uh, what we have last week. So uh, if you have a question, please uh, ask. And then I should not spend too much time to, uh, just one minute. I will not spend too much time to, uh, please don't spend too much time to uh, express your uh, uh, idea or something like this. So first, let's talk about the background, the Chinese history uh, for the last 2,500 years. And remember, we are talking about during the time uh, of uh, so-called uh, uh, spring and autumn uh, period. Okay, that's about 500 BC. 
and about 400 to 300 BC, that's the warrior state. So that's the time we are talking about. During that time, China in that land has many, many state, or you want to call it a country or the uh, uh, feudal lord, okay, that's the situation. Uh, the chi China hasn't been as uh, united or a single country until not been there until 200 BC, the Qin dynasty and the uh, Han dynasty. That's a, just a quick review on the Chinese history. And uh, we are talking about this period of time. So, okay, so that's the situation. So just give a quick review on the situation during that time about the five, uh, 700 to 500 BC, the so-called the uh, spring and the autumn period. China has at least 100 states, all right? They are fighting each other, all right? So over 200 years, we enter the warring state. That means they only have a seven state, okay? The warring, uh, the, uh, the warring state. During that time, after 200 years, they have the, the, the number of states reduced from few hundreds to seven. So you can imagine what kind of situation people are facing. And a lot of intellectual, intellect, okay, the philosopher, politician, they try to resolve the problem, not necessarily for uh, the good of the people, some for good for the, uh, 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 the king, sometimes it's good for the person, for the individual. So that's time, so we call the hungry school of thought. So during the late uh, old, uh, spring and the autumn period and the early or to, uh, and the warring state period for this 500, uh, 300 years, and a lot of thought philosopher coming out. So that's why in the Sima Qian, the great historian, they this as a hundred schools of thought. So I quickly list all these thoughts on that. That's, um, okay, uh, that's have a Madeline med question. Madeline, please. Yes, uh, on that previous slide, the one just prior to this one, can you, can you just tell us uh, where Yang Shu was in all of this geographically? Uh, I'm not very sure. I think that he is from the state of Du, I think, you know, I think I'm not very sure, but probably on this kind the same uh, place as, is Yang Zhu coming from? Uh, where is Yang Zhu coming from? Let me check. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't pay attention on that. Uh, uh, oh, we don't know. We don't know. Okay, because that's another thing we want to talk about later. Okay, because okay, we thanks. really don't know Yang Zhu's his uh, 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 background. Okay, so I, that's why I, I, I didn't list it. Yeah, so so Henry School of Thought that that's back to um, since uh, James mentioned about uh, Lao Tzu is the first one. If you look at the uh, like this table. You will see I list Lao Tzu as the first one because according to the historical account, he even taught Confucius. So he must be older than Confucius. And how come in uh, uh, Feng Yulan's book, this Lao Tzu as the second phase and the Yang Zhu are the first phase? Okay. So I think, that's what I think. Okay. So of course it's arguable. Lao Tzu, Probably they have the person exists, but the book we read today as Dao De Jing may not be there okay, until much later time. That's my reason because I don't see Zhuangzi who is much later. All right, the, the book created much later. In the book, he mentioned about Lao Tzu a lot, but he never quote all right, the, the writing in the Dao De Jing. So that's the reason I believe Dao De Jing probably creates the later time, not the early time. Uh, so that's, I believe that's the reason uh, Yang Zhu, uh, uh, Feng Yulan list Yang Zhu as the early Taoism thinking. That, that's my belief. So, you know, and then uh, you, of course, you can have your own opinion, but uh, that's why, you know. So I hope I answer your question, James. Uh 
May. I did. Thanks. Hi. Uh, Douglas, you have your hands up. Where did the myth come from that he ran and that Lao Tzu actually uh, uh, walked away from everything? Like he, well, he went, rode on the, the bull and he, he, he went away from everything, okay, when he left. So this is what I'm trying to find out. If he, he, he literally took, he took off, it's never to be seen again. Yeah, yeah, that's the legendary. But today that's focused on Yang Zhu and I'm going to use this one. Uh, this one, so far, I just talking about the background, the overall background, we haven't get started yet. So just make sure we are in the same page. So, okay, I'm going to move on. Okay, if we have no question. So I'm going to spend a few slides quickly review. Last week, we talked about Mozi, in case you don't remember, or in case you didn't attend uh, last week, Mita. And the reason Mozi is important for today's uh, teaching is Mozi and Yang Zhu is opposite. Okay, if you only learn one and you just reverse, and you probably get the other one. So that's very simple. So if we want to go to the test, okay, so Chinese SAT test, if you only read Mozi, not reading Yang Zhu, and people ask, the, ask you about Yang Zhu, it just reverse what Mozi is talking about. That's it. So Mozi, remember last week he has 10. Uh, scissors or 10 main subjects we're talking about, okay? So uh, you can quick, most important is the impartial love or we want to call it all embracing love or universal love. And another one is against the military aggression. Okay. So these two are the most important thing about modes. And I'm going to show this one again, but <coughs> please don't argue too much on this one. And then uh, I make some modification because before I put the uh, progressive and conservative and cause a lot of problems. So I'm going to change to looking forward and looking backward. Okay. Because some people are looking forward, like Mo Zi, he think about the change of the society. He's thinking about doing something. Okay, he talk, looking at the future, same as Han Fei Zi, the famous Chinese legalism. He is talking about the law, talking about reward and the punishment to do something. Okay, for the people. And there's another school of people, they think about the old time, they always praise the old sage. Okay, remember Mozi and Han Zhu hardly praise the old time, the old sage. They have the, uh, the, uh, the nature state concept, but they don't say, they didn't say that time was wonderful. Okay, but all these four people, they talk about old time are good. Mencius and the Xunzi, they have a different concept, but they believe the old sage is good. But Laozi and the Yang Zhu, they think about the before the sage, the, 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 the sage kid, the nature is good. So I think that's the way I separate this philosopher. Okay. And, and if you look at the vertical, and some are look at the, the religious metaphysics solution, and then the one on the bottom looking for the psychological solution. Okay, so that's I kind of the separate for this great uh, philosopher, and you get the idea on um, uh, this chart. So if you look at Mozi and the Yang Zhu, you will see they are on the totally opposite spectrum, right? So. Um, Okay, so, okay, uh, just one minute. Uh, okay, Mozi and the Yang Zhu on the totally opposite uh, spectrum. Okay, so any question on this one? Um, on this chart, so this one just, you know, not on the detail, but, you know, just give you a rough idea, you know, uh, for a few philosophers. Uh, Kevin, please. Yeah, just a quick uh, comment, maybe. I would suggest loads, maybe in the middle in the origin. Here, in the middle? For, yeah, for example, okay. you compare to mods and mods is uh, allow each other, right? Then you young to is a self light. So from Lo's aspect, she said, if you love yourself, other people, let's, uh, let's see what, what, what is typical this one chapter scene. If you see this good, the bad thing gonna arise. If you see this bad, or so I would see the 
nature also neutral. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Kevin, to, uh, to talk about this. Yeah, I forget to mention one thing. Here, I'm talking about political, okay? I'm not talking about uh, moral or uh, ethical teaching. I'm talking about political solution. So uh, all you have to look at in uh, the political, uh, uh, their political um, uh, solution. So that, that, that's why I put it in this way. Yeah. But again, this one is very rough. I just quickly lay out. Uh, of course, if we want to uh, uh, argue, we can spend, if we want to uh, discuss on this chart, we probably can spend two hours to talk about this. Yeah, I just help people understand my mind about all these philosophies. Okay. So uh, I'm going to move on and uh, talk about the first part. I'm going to talk about uh, the book. Uh, in general, I'm interested when I talk about philosophy, I'm interested in the book because uh, we don't know the person, but the book exists. So for example, last week we talked about Mo Zi, okay. And uh, remember I showed this table, okay. We have, he has 15 books and 71 chapters left. We don't know uh, it's written by one person or uh, during what time, probably close 100 years time, but at least there's a rich document about Mo Zi. But when we deal with Yang Zhu, okay, actually there's no book about Yang Zhu. So put that back uh, for a minute. Hold on, this one. Correct. I didn't have a chance to see it. Uh, who is speaking? Melinda. Melinda. Oh, Melinda. Yes. Okay. So that's last week. I just so uh, you have any question on this one? Can you move it up some? Okay. So that's for that's last week. Okay. So uh, I will put this one. If you are interested, you can go to the uh, uh, Meetup site and then they have to look at the schedule. If you click on the schedule, let me show you on this one. Okay, quickly. So if you go to this one and if you click this, right, you will see a. Oh, not this one. Uh, you should go into the bottom. So go to the bottom, right? So usually you will see the spreadsheet. Okay, that's my personal spreadsheet and I share with everyone. So basically you can see the meetup and they have a PowerPoint the presentation, they have a YouTube. Okay, if you missed the video, you can see the meetup and the tentative schedule. And if you are interested in last year, so you still can go to uh, 2021 and you will see that's last year, a little bit. So uh, most of them I have the information post here and the future, Okay, that's what I'm planning to do. So uh, look at this one, if you have any suggestion and then just let me know. Okay, so that's the thing. So that's last week. I just want to show everyone how rich of the book of Mozi and how little or basically nothing about it. Yang Zhu. Okay, and someone may curious about why nobody call Yang Zhu or Yang Zhu, okay? because there's no book. So there's no book. Uh, since you have a book that you call some Yang Zi, but he has no book. So people call Yang Zhu, uh, just call the name. But how do we know him? Okay. Basically, we were from different writing. Okay. So uh, the writing we uh, refer is from Meng Zi, Mencius. Okay, That's the most famous, and that's the most people in Asia know Yang Zhu is through Meng Zi. Mencius, okay. So Mencius talk about Yang, Yang Zhu. And then we, uh, I think Madeline asked the question, uh, where is Yang Zhu uh, coming from? Okay, and how old is he since we have no idea. But we are very sure he is after Mo Zi, okay, before Mencius. Because Mo Zi never mentioned about Yang Zhu and uh, Mencius mentioned about Yang Zhu a lot since he is his manager's uh, enemy, okay, opponent. So he, he mentioned a lot. So that's why uh, we know Yang Zhu is, was born after Mo, Mo Zi and before Manchus. <clears throat> uh, another book we refer is uh, so-called Lie Zi. Okay. Lie Zi, personally, I don't like this book a lot because that's a Taoism mystical writing, uh, but you know, there has a whole chapter 
talking about Yang Zhu. That's a, so talking about Yang. Of course, that's he just recorded. And Han Feizi has a one chapter. Han Feizi has a 55 chapter. Has a one chapter called the Famous School of Thought. He's talking about the uh, Ru, which is a Confucius uh, school, and talk about Taoism and uh, talk about Moism. And uh, there's one paragraph talking about uh, Yang Zhu, and that's how we get this one. And another one is so called Lu Si Chun Qiu, okay, and uh, that's also important uh, uh, book. But basically, this book is the collection of a lot of writing. So, you know, again, that's not the original writing. And some debate on this, this book, uh, this book, okay. Um, a lot of argue is this book is created much later time, okay. It's not a real book during the warring uh, state or the early time, probably much later because they said that the, the writer are very skillful. They use this to promote the Taoism without talking about Taoism. Okay. So that's an excellent writing, but you know, it probably created much later. So we don't know. And another famous book actually from, uh, I think the German uh, uh, professor Fork, okay, from the German uh, synologist. Okay. And if you go to uh, Amazon to search, uh, you probably will find this book if you want to learn Yang Zhu. And that's probably the most uh, Westerner know Yang Zhu is through this book. So that's what we know, okay? Before we go into the text and any question about the background and the historical account of uh, Yang Zhu, please raise your hand. No? And then I'd like to ask a question and uh, Anyone uh, know Yang Zhu before this meetup, or uh, you have no idea? I see some raise, uh, shake head. Okay, so probably very foreign. Okay, to most of the people. Okay, and so I think even for most of the Asian or Chinese, uh, probably have a lot of misunderstanding about Yang Zhu. Okay, so because the reason is number one, uh, most of the people know Yang Zhu through mentions. And of course, you can imagine Manchus doesn't have a good word about him. And the secondly, most of the uh, Asian uh, believe or uh, reading Confucius teaching, then Confucius is argue against Yang Zhu. So of course, of, they don't know Yang Zhu. Most of the people don't know Yang Zhu. And if you know, probably uh, a lot of misunderstanding, including this book, Professor Fork's book, the uh, Yang Zhu, the Garden of Prejo, he probably described, I didn't read the book, and then I just read some uh, title and some uh, summary. Sounds like he described Yang Zhu as a uh, hedonism or kind of like Epicurean, okay, Chinese Epicurean, this one. So I think, and same as uh, Feng Yulan believe Yang Zhu probably much more than just uh, Epicurean. So that's why, you know, it's still arguable. He's the first face of the Taoism uh, philosopher. So Jason, uh, Mark, Mark, had, Mark had his hand up for a long time. Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, I didn't see uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see Alex. Uh, yeah, uh, Mark, please. Yeah, I had a, a question and then a comment. A question was, when you asked if anybody knew about Yang Zhu before this, how many yeah. people raised their hands? Because I couldn't see. I couldn't see the Bumbo. I only, because I'm sorry, because we have a lot of people. We have 37 people. So I'm sharing the screen, so I don't see it. And the, uh, Pin, did you see anybody raise hand or anybody <laughs> facial I, expression? I, I didn't, I, I, I was aware of Yang Zhu, but I, I yeah, I, but I don't see everyone on my screen, so. I, okay, so you know, I even don't you don't know, you don't, you, you are not, uh, not familiar with Yang Zhu. I, I am, I, I was, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you read the uh, story, uh, Pin, uh, the story about Yang Zhu and his younger brother? No, no, like you said, I, I just knew it uh, mainly from Monza, from Manchester. Okay, 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 okay. So, okay, so you don't know the-, the and, and you know the comments saying, I would not pluck a, a hair of myself to save the world. 
Okay, so that's, that's amazing. A comment just from the comment saying, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, some some may curious up like next week we are going to talk about the school of name and we skip mentions. Okay, the reason is not not because mention is not important because mention is so important we will deal with him many many times and including uh, pin probably will have uh, one section just to read one chapter. That's why I will skip that one from uh, Feng Yulan. And uh, for example, like today, we probably will read a lot of mentions, okay? It's because there's no Yang Zhu's writing. So let's read the mentions uh, writing. And this, this one is the famous, and that's what Pin is talking about. He probably uh, the, uh, read this one. I believe Pin read this one before. Uh, uh, the sage kid stopped, okay, that's the mentions he said, okay, in one of his teaching, he's talking about complaining, okay? The sage kid stopped governing. The feudal law which they are powers, the scholars practice sophistry. So he's talking about this, this situation during the warring state. Okay, there's no more sage king. The feudal law are fighting each other. Even in, in academic world, they are practicing sophistry. Okay. The philosophers of Yangzhu and the Mo Di, which is Mo Zi, are popular now. Okay. People in the entire world believe the teaching of either Yang or Mo. I'm not sure I highlight this one. I'm not sure the English translation really reflect what uh, Mencius taught. Mencius taught is the teaching around the world. If the teaching is not Yang, there must be Mo. That means there are only two this teaching in, this, in the world. Yang or Mo, Yang Zhu or Mo Di. Yang's principle is for myself, which means seeing the ruler as an individual, the people are individual. Most uh, Mo, okay, which is Mo Zi, Mo's principle is impartial love, which means treating the parents as others, not recognizing one's ruler or one's parents is no different than what beast will do. That's Mentions condemnation, very serious situation. If you don't have ruler, have emperor, you don't have, uh, you don't treat your parents different, you don't treat your emperor different, pay respect, that's just like a beast, that's an animal, okay, worse than barbarian. If the principle of young and the more are not stopped and the principles of Confucius are not set forth, then those perverse speakings will mislead the people and block the path of benevolence and the righteousness, which is Ren and the Yi. That's the most important of uh, Confucian uh, ethical teaching. When benevolence and the righteousness are blocked, beasts will lead on to devour men and the men will devour one another. So it's very serious condemnation if you don't talking about Yang and the Zhu, you kind of live a life without emperor, live a life without a parent. That's no different than beast. And the which, if not, then it continue, will become like situation men uh, devour another man. So that's mention second. And that's why most of people, that's how most of people know Yang Zhu and the Mo Zi is teaching. But the point here, may not be their teaching. The point here is you can see how popular during that time in the warring state, okay? The Yang Zhu's teaching and the Moses' teaching is very popular. Otherwise, Manchus would not have this kind of uh, uh, a complaint or this kind of work. So uh, that's most of people know about uh, Yang Zhu and the Moses is from Manchus' writing, uh, Manchus' teaching. Any question, comment? Okay, sorry. let's move on. Sorry, I have my uh, hand up. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I don't see my hands up. Uh, the hand, hold on, let me see. Oh, sorry, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I blocked my screen. So, uh, <laughs> sorry about this. Okay, okay, so I'm going to, uh, who is speaking, Alex? Yeah. No? Um, okay, please, yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question. It's kind of a, um, because based on the principle uh, of Yang Zhu that I've read from the, from the text, um, I'm just wondering, 
how his how how come his pop idea became? I mean, I think his idea is is, is you know probably pretty cool back then. It's very different. Um, but uh, in my idea, as someone who is who considers himself as you know a, a recluse, you know from from the society, how would why is isn't it kind of contradictory to his own teaching that he's trying to popularize his philosophy? Um, at the same time, being a reclusive person, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, what I'm uh, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, thank you. I also thought. So I also think about this question. Yeah. So that's my answer. Uh, that's why Yang Zhu has no book, right? He probably has some idea like individualism and the free, take care of yourself, and the probably have a lot of followers. And just like you said, you know, he is a recluse and he probably not interested like Mencius or Confucius, gather a lot of people traveling around. So he has no book left and he has no established school. Okay, so I think that's so, the so, reason. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially he probably um, kind of made his uh, philosophy and people kind of just like it and follow him instead of he trying to popularize, popularize his philosophy, would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with you, but we, we, that's what we just talk, you know, because we are not scholar and uh, that's, I believe, you know, uh, wishful thinking, you know, that's the way it makes sense to me. Uh, we have uh, Mark and uh, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to address the last speaker's question. Um, <laughs> did, did, I don't agree with the description from um, the text that we read. Uh, hold, hold on, hold, hold on, yeah, uh, uh, Mark, you don't, uh, you don't agree measures or you don't agree with me? <laughs> no, neither, neither one. The reading that we had, where, the yeah. chapter that we read about Yang Zhu, where he talked about the three phases of Taoism, and he classified Yang Zhu as the first phase, Lao Tzu as the second phase, and Guangzhu, and Guangzhu as the third phase. So I'm trying to address the previous speaker's question about the reclusiveness. So according to this author, um, Yang Zhu was a recluse. I don't think that's accurate for a couple of reasons. One, I've read the, there's the chapter Yang Zhu, this is chapter seven of the late Tzu. I read it a couple of times over the previous couple of days. Um, and I've read the Dao Te Ching probably 20 times. Um, comparing the two texts, well, first of all, let me comment on the late Tzu. The late Tzu, I think, is probably, as far as I've been able to ascertain, probably the best representation of Yang Zhu's thought. A couple of reasons for this. Um, the main one is the, the different commentaries. I've only read that chapter of the late Tzu, so I'm not familiar with the rest of the text. But the commentaries that I've read on the late Tzu, a couple of different ones, all stress how different chapter 7 is from the, from the other chapters in the book. Like his content is radically different than the other chapters. And reading it, I can see why. Um, it is very different um, than anything I've ever heard coming out of Chinese or modern philosophy. Um, has anyone here read it? Um, have you read it, Peter or Pin? Chapter seven of the late Tzu? I, no, I, I, I've, uh, I've never I've never read the Tzu. Okay. Yeah. So so I'm also very familiar with Epicureanism. And there's an Indian school called Ajivita, which is very similar to Epicureanism and Yangzhu. They're all kind of can be classified as egoism. And they all suffered a similar historical fate, which is the writings were all repressed, and crushed, and lost. Ajivita even more so than Yangzhu. The, the, the founder of that school was uh, Macaulay Gosala. Um, but they're uh, not- I'm, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Mark? Okay, I, yeah. I will put you on hold because that's a much bigger question. Yeah, I know what you are talking about this and then I'm not assuming uh, everybody have to accept what's uh, 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 Fong okay. Yolan's argument. Let's go through uh, Fong Yolan's okay, argument. Thank, thanks yeah. for stopping. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you. Just thank let me you. make I, one I, point though. Let, it, let yeah, me make please. one point. I don't yeah. agree that Yang Zhu was a recluse. I think that's a mischaracterization of it. And that's oh. what the author of the reading says, but I don't think that's correct. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, remember Mark's comment. Yes, I'll yeah, I, I yeah. would maybe just add uh, 
market's definitely not alone. This three phase, I, I would say most people disagree with Formula Yeah, I agree. And this they, red, we, recluse is is his just his his theory, yeah, his hypothesis. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And I I okay, we can talk about this, but that's please hold on on this opinion. Let's go through this one because some are much learn much uh, have much better background than others. So that's go through this one, then we will have time to argue on this. this. Uh, Kevin and Joe, Kevin, please. Yeah, my basis is uh, current page con content. I not agree with uh, uh, Mencia as I said. I would say, why don't that also in uh, Hundra school got on the same criterion. Basically, it's, you can combine all together. Like you must just look for hierarchy, like law. You have to respect uh, rulers or your parents. It, it's not uh, exclusive of each other, I would say. It's need both. It's like our God family. We need to love each other. Also, I need to respect my parents. Why is it, it also respect a ruler? A, a, a law, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, so right now we try uh yeah i will ask everyone try not express you agree or disagree okay because we i just try to go through what we have okay right now so uh, i probably will from now on i probably will uh, discourage everyone uh, express your opinion okay not because uh, uh i don't want to suppress everybody's opinion because uh, we want to go through that and at the end and i fully understand not everyone agree Okay, but since we are following Feng Yulan, the writing, he has his argument. Let's go through his argument. Uh, Joe, please. Just a really quick question that I thought might be interesting is that I, and maybe it's just because I came out of an Ayn Rand meetup like prior to this. So, um, but is his egotism like the same as like Ayn Rand's philosophy, objects, objectivist philosophy? Is it similar? And then it's about um, self. It's about self-interest in in that regard. Like I okay. So that's also debatable. Okay. So uh, uh, since there's no writing, okay, for Yang Zhu, so a lot of thing is from the secondary or not the sex, not the, from the his opponent's writing. So we have a deduce, just like when we read the pre-Socratic philosopher, right? In the pre-Socratic philosopher, usually we they don't have they only have some fragment left. And we have to know the pre-Socratic philosopher by reading Plato and Aristotle, because they talk about that. And another name, that's a straw man argument. So we have to deduce, okay, induce to what, what uh, the original writing, same as Yang Zhu's writing. So, you know, uh, egoism, okay, to, it's a common name to label to Yang Zhu. And then, of course, uh, Personally, I disagree. Okay, I I will call. I even disagree with uh, uh, Feng Yulan. I believe Yang Zhu is early individualism. Okay, that's my my theory. Just individualism. So I'm going to move on. Okay, um, let me see. Uh, let me move on. Then James, please. Uh, 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 I, then we'll go to you. Okay, I'm going to uh, talk about another mentions writing. Okay. Because we turn out that we will read a lot of mentions because this that's the best writing and which may not be the best, uh, not may not be the most accurate. But the previous uh, I just want to mention is how talk about he is a reason. Okay, the reason is this: mentions said. Yang's principle was for myself, even though he might be able to be benefit the world by plucking out a single hair, he would not have done it. So that's Mencius' word. And there's been this kind of word being copy and copy, not original from Mencius, but they must have some saying about this. Okay, so all the historical writing, when, they, when people talk about Yang Zhu, his most famous word is I will not even plucking out a single hair to benefit the entire world. Okay, so that's the word labeled to him for 2,500 years. Most principle, that's most 
his impartial love. Even he had to damage his whole body from head to heel in order to benefit the whole kingdom. He would hesitate to do it. So you will see, you know, how different of these two people, okay, Mengzi and uh, uh, Yang Zhu. One is well, do whatever I can do to help other people. Okay, and Yang Zhu will say, not even pluck one hair. Okay, I'm not going to do it. Okay, so. I believe that's a personal belief. That's just one of his arguments. He just make it radical, okay, to show his uh, uh, individualism. But since he has no school, blah 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 blah. So you know, for a long time, people consider him as selfish and uh, egoist. Uh, that's my my point. Okay. Um, I think we have uh, James, please. Yeah, I, I just wanted to give my answer to uh, Joe's question. I thought I think I think that's reasonable. Uh, you know, since everyone is an individualist, uh, the the uh, the idea that uh, I, I think that uh, I, I think that uh, young uh, young Yang young, young Zhu Lin, yeah, Yang Zhu, is actually closer to uh, Heidegger uh, than than to Anne Rand. Uh, the idea that he, it's mentioned in the uh, uh, the book, the uh, Feng Yulan book, uh, it mentions the um, uh, the, uh, the kind of like being motivated by one's relationship to the human world, and that is like that corresponds to what Heidegger called the they world, the the other the the world of the others, the world the others that the world that the others create for you. So his concept to me seems very close to Heidegger's concept, which ends up being a very um, altruistic uh, concept of individualism. Uh, I think there's early and late Ayn Rand. The early Ayn Rand was the, um, the, uh, the science fiction book where she talks about uh, people being trapped in a world of uh, conformity and having to escape uh, through their individualist impulses. So I think that maybe is kind of like this kind of reclusism that 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 uh, Aang Fulan speaks of. There there's a there's a correspondence there. In other words, if you don't want to get drafted into the army, if you don't want to get tortured by the uh, by the by the by the you know whatever party is in power, whatever king uh, you're living in the domain is, you could climb a mountain and probably possibly escape. So that that. That's one idea, I think, in uh, Yang Zhu. Um, okay. Yeah, so that, that's all. I think there is there's, there, there, there are correspondences between any kind of individualist philosophy, but I think uh, this, this particular individualism uh, I see is a little closer to uh, Heidegger than to Ayn Rand, who eventually ends up with the, you have to be an individualist in order to be rich and as, as wealthy as you deserve to be in a society that wants to reward everyone equally and uh, you know, in other words, a reaction to uh, socialism, you know, the the current of socialism. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, James. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, James. And when we uh, later on quickly, we will read uh, Confucius' comment, okay, about the recruits. So I think uh, you will reflect what James is talking about. Uh, that's a way to react the situation. Okay, if you are not happy with the situation or the world is in the terrible situation, so we will quick, very quick, we will. Uh, talk about this. Uh, have we read this one? Okay, yeah. That's another from Mencius. Okay, Mencius said that means you know. This also shows how uh, what kind of debate uh, that probably have a very common debate uh, during that time. Mencius said those who are fleeing from the arrow of more modes, okay, naturally turn to yang. Okay, Mencius said. If you disagree with Mozi, you will go to Yang. Okay. Kind of like, you know, if you work so hard, try to help everybody, and then you find out it doesn't work, or you disagree this time, you go to another direction, swing to another, another direction. Okay. And the, the, those who are freed from the era of Yang, nature turn to Confucius. He used the word Ru, which is the Confucian tradition. Okay. When they so turn they shall at once simply be received. And then those who nowadays dispute with the father of Yang and the Mo do so if they were pursuing a straight pig. If they have chased them, tied it. Okay. So I think he, I'm not very sure why he talked about this, but I believe Mencius is trying to talk about 
by nature, if you disagree with Mozi, then you will go to Yangzu naturally. If you disagree with Yangzu, you will naturally go to Confucius. Okay, so you don't have to argue and nail nail it to certain point. Just like you chase a pig and then tie it. I think that's what Mencius is talking about. But important, the importance of this text is talking Mencius is talking about reflect the situation in the scholarly world. Okay, scholastic world. They have a heated debate between Moizan, Yangzu, and Confucius. They probably have this kind of situation. So you can imagine during that time. And in today's world, most people don't know Yangzu, okay? and even not most, okay? but during that time, they're probably very popular during that time. So we are going to uh, go to uh, Bong Yolan's writing. Okay? And his writing, of course, a lot of people disagree, and we will discuss on this one. So first, he talked about recruits, okay? I, I, even the first point, a lot of people disagree, but that's, forget about whether or not Yang Zhu is a recruit. Let's talk about the concept of recruits during that time. And then we talk about Yang Zhu's idea, and then we are going to, if we have time, we are going to read some text from Dao De Jing and from Zhuang Zi, okay? Then we will see what's uh, uh, Feng Yolan's argument. So that's the uh, text we have. Okay, first, I think that's the two important uh, texts we have to read about the recruits. Okay, so forget about the argument whether or not Yang Zhu is recruits or not a recruits. Okay, so right now Confucius is talking about recruits. Remember, Confucius should be born before Yang Zhu, so there's no way Confucius know Yang Zhu. Confucius just talk about recruits. And recruits are probably one of the traditions during the uh, ancient uh, Chinese time. Um, uh, James, can you uh, mute yourself? I think you have a lot of things. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so during that time, okay, so I think that's one chapter Confucius to talk about. Okay, uh, here, that's an important uh, Confucius uh, disciple, Zi Lu, okay. Zi Lu is one of the most of the senior, senior, I mean the seniority, not the age. Uh, uh, disciple of Confucius. He just nine years younger than Confucius. Uh, may not be the oldest, but he's most senior as a student. He first followed, and he kind of served as a Confucius bodyguard. He's mm, get a lot of job, easy to get a job, and he worked on a different uh, state and eventually got uh, killed okay, during a coup. Okay, so Zi Lu is important. And he always followed Confucius, travel around. So this text is right as Zi Lu happened in, happening to pass the night in Shimen, which is, a, I believe is a city. The gatekeeper said to him, who do you come from? Here I put a question mark because uh, in the text, if you read from Feng Yolan, Feng Yolan believe Chen Men is a person who is a recruit. And I don't think so. I think the Chen Men means the person, the gatekeeper, the, uh, the the, 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 the city gatekeeper. Okay, so okay, it's, it's open question. The gatekeeper asked him, whom do you come from? Zi Lu said, from Mr. Kong. The gatekeeper said, is he the one who knows he cannot succeed, yet keep on trying to do so? So this comment about Confucius okay, is very famous because he knows he cannot be successful, okay, what he want to do, but he still keep on doing so. Okay. So that's describe Confucius attitude during that time. Second text, again, it's Zi Lu. This one is a little bit longer, okay. So Zi Lu following the master happened to fall behind. When he met an old man carrying across his shoulder on a staff, a basket of weeds. Zi Lu said to him, have you seen my master, sir? The old man replied, okay, that's the common, okay, the old, old man common about the people, so-called Junzi or this kind of scholar, okay. He said, you are kind of people who hardly use their limbs, cannot recognize the different grades. Who is your master? 
So this old man is talking about the scholar, kind of the scholar, okay, you just, the rule tradition, they just, you know, never work, okay, just read, study, talk, okay. They don't use their hand, they cannot tell the different kind of grain, okay, not productive. Okay, the blah, 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 then they have the other discretion, then the evening, the old, uh, the old, then that Zhu stay in his house, prepare dinner and introduce his two sons to Zhu. The second day, Zhu catch up uh, Confucius and uh, report the account to Confucius. The Confucius said, he is a recruit and send Zhu back to see him again. But when he got to the place, the old man was gone, okay. So, this one reflects the situation during that time, they probably have a lot of people uh, escape from the war because a lot of war, government probably very corruptive. So some people or uh, some aristocrats, probably the low ranking aristocrat, just escape, okay. Become a farmer, okay. Go to the mountain and uh, just provide themselves. That probably represent a tradition during that time and Confucius as to do, go back to see him. So the last sentence is important. Uh, the last paragraph is important. That's Zhu's comment about the recruits, which reflect Confucius thinking. Not to take office is not righteousness, okay? Righteousness here probably means dutiful, okay? Not do your duty. Since the family relation cannot be neglected, how can he set aside the duty of a minister? He desired to maintain his personal purity, but neglect the spring relationship. Is it, a, it is the duty of a Junzi to take government office, even he knows the great Tao has not been respected for a long time. So the text I highlight here is very important to show what Confucius comment about recruits. He talked about that's your duty, okay, as a uh, belong to the in intelligentsia. Yeah, let's put it this way: you have a responsible to work for government. You cannot just want to maintain your personal purity and ignore the relationship. He talked about the spring relationship. He talked about relationship between minister and emperor. That's the spring relation, just like. The parental relationship, the son and the father. Okay. So that's the all important relationship. You cannot neglect it. So that's your duty. Even the government are corrupted, even the world is in a terrible situation, you know you can you have no way to be successful. That's your duty to do the work. So that's Confucius' uh, the argument about the recruits. So whether or not the Yang Zhu is a recruit, that's a diff different situation. Right now we're talking about Confucius' idea about recruits. So, so any comment on that or any question? Just one minute. Hi, Jason. Yes, I have a comment on that because I think that, you know, um, basically, what Confucius is uh, saying is that you are not yourself. You belong to the to the government, to the emperor, and that you have a more responsibility to the empire, and you're not yourself. Yeah, thank you, Alex. And I, I what should I say? I say I agree with you. You know, because um, and you remind me. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Confucius probably not think about you are individual person, right? You belong to the family. When I hear, sit here, I'm not myself because I belong to my family. When I go to work, I belong to this society. So you have your job to do. So you can see what the recruits, let's say it's Yang Zhu, if Yang Zhu is individualism, it's wrong because according to Confucius, because you separate yourself from the relationship of family, of the uh, society. Okay, so Mencius condemn is just like a beast. If that, this situation keep going on, the society will become men devour men. Okay, that's Mencius' word. Uh, Michelle, right? 
Uh, Michael. Hi. Um, my question was, uh, uh, Twen is when Xuanzu is, is um, afraid of being um, uh, cut down like a tree, um, is he primarily afraid of the state or um, are there private interests that he might be afraid of? You talk about Zhuangzi afraid. Okay, so that's a different situation. Okay, Zhuangzi is on the later time according to Feng Youzan. I probably want to answer your question a little bit later when we put on this stage. Is okay, Michael? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And if I forget, please remind me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because that's another situation. Okay. So uh, I think we've done this one. Okay. So let's talk about Yang Zhu's fundamental ideas. Okay. Unlike uh, uh, Mo Zi, okay. Remember, we list 10 of his major ideas. And that's only partial of that. He has another part of his logician. Okay. About logic, debate, uh, uh, sophistry. That's another part. So it's so rich. But Yang Zhu, probably only two, each one for yourself or so-called uh, self is important, something like this. And the second thing is uh, despising of things and the valuing of life. Okay, that's only two principles. Okay, so uh, let's read one of the writing and just like Mark talked about the Lie Zi is probably the most complete uh, document about Yang Zhu because it dedicated, I think, it's, uh, there's a 10 chapter in Lie Zi and the one chapter is about uh, Yang Zhu. Okay. So uh, he said that the man of antique, that's assumed, you know, he didn't mention the name, but because it's in the chapter of Yang Zhu, we assume they are the disciple or father of, of the Yang Zhu. If by injuring a single hair, they could have profited uh, the world, would not have done it. Had the world been offered to them, as their exclusive possession, they would not have taken it. If everybody would refuse to pluck out even a single hair, and everyone, everybody would refuse to take the whole world as a gain, the world would be in perfect order. So that's his argument okay, about the uh, individualism. He is not only, is not like uh, some people would call it a selfish, <coughs> self-benefit, egoism, you know, but he has the other side. Okay, so he talking about, I don't want help, I don't want to do everything to, do, uh, to deal other business, and I don't want to get other things, get things from others. In another way, another side, that's my opinion, another side of argument from Yang Zhu has, is lost. Okay. Because people only focus on his individual, talking about, I'm not going to help other people, and not talking about he is not taking, take profit or taking a uh, 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 profit from other people. He is talking about like, he is individual, he is doing his own work. Okay, so I think that's the 50% of Yang Zhu's argument has been lost. That's why you know, a lot of misunderstanding on um, Yang Zhu's argument. And then some people have an argument about like, why are you not helping other people? But the argument is when you try to help other people, you involve the moral standard. And the moral standard is different from person to person. And then when you try to help, sometimes you do more harm than uh, help. That's the argument from Lao Tzu later, okay, if you read the uh, Lao Tzu's uh, text. So we have a few hands up, and then let's go from uh, James and the Madeline. James, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think uh, this, is where, this is where I definitely see that the relationship with uh, Heidegger, which is just, I think, really interesting, because uh, even uh, Yang, and Yang Yulan, Feng Yulan even talks about uh, Yang Zhu having an idea about uh, the ancestry of things. So Yang Zhu, I think, I think on a metaphysically, he may have been very sophisticated. Uh, this idea that uh, he was opposed to the entanglement of things. This corresponds with um, 
with uh, Heidegger's concept of uh, of uh, uh, a Heideggerian concept uh, of, of entanglement in the world, and uh, that in other words, you don't you're not basically running your plan in the world, but you just get entangled in existence, getting entangled in existence, getting entangled by things here in in Feng in Yangzhou, and uh, the uh, and uh, so. Uh, and but uh, of course Heidegger has a different cause and solution. Heidegger sees the cause as being other other beings in the world affecting you. Where I think uh, Yang Zhu is being attributed uh, as being afraid of the things themselves. So in other words, where Heidegger would say there are useful things in the world, some of the things in the world that you are just you know that have the same this. Uh, the same ascendance that you have, you are descended from the same beings that they are ascended from. There is a thing called, for Heidegger, there's a thing called being, which makes, which kind of puts everything on a similar plane. Uh, but but the, you're a special kind of being, right? So called, called a human. And uh, the but the but the uh, but but understanding that you're descended from other beings is a big insight into um, how you are uh, being in the human world, as as uh, Yang Fu Yulan points out. So I I, I think uh, if we if we understand this the way uh, uh, Feng Yulan understands it. There is this kind of like uh, possibility that uh, uh, Yang Zhu actually had a very sophisticated metaphysical glimpse of reality based on the uh, equal ascendance of being uh, of, of, of all things in the world. And the necessity, and what he realizes, there was a necessity for one to protect themselves from the entanglement that things caused, rather than seeking power from objects, seeking power from other people, seeking power from useful tools, which which was which is the con, which is the conclusion of of Heidegger in being in time. So this is just that's it's just uh, this is this is this is a very interesting similarity to me. Uh, thank you, James. Yeah, I'm not sure how many read Heidegger here, uh, but uh, since I also read Heidegger, I I got your point. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, I think the criticism about the criticism on Yang Zhu probably the same criticism on Heidegger okay, on the moral sense. Actually, Heidegger is. A moral is not immoral. Same as Yang Zhu. I think that's my opinion. But uh, uh, that's another thing we talk. We, we can talk about later to compare the this kind of probably the early existentialism idea. So yeah. So okay. Let's continue. Uh, Madeline and the Karen. Madeline, please. Yes. Um, in the reading that we did for today. Uh, I, there was a, uh, I believe it was a, a quotation from uh, Chuangzhu. Mm -hmm. Chuangzhu. Um, Chuangzhu, yeah. Yes. Um, sort of expanding upon this, like if they, you know, if you, would you give a single hair? Would you give a limb to, get, yeah. to gain the whole world? And so it seems as if um, Yangzhu is taking a stand. He's saying, I'm not even going to start with that, because once I start, uh, the world is going to ask so much of me that I will have nothing left. <laughs> uh, thank you for mentioning this. I think this one is from Dietz, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's from Dietz. Yeah, yeah. I thank you for mentioning this. Yeah. Uh, uh, who's that? Uh, Karen, please. Yeah, I I like this slide a a lot because it it uh i think there's an integration between the two principles that it brings out when it's put in this way so the previous quote was something like i wouldn't pluck out a, a hair of my arm to save the world and here it's i wouldn't pluck out a hair of my arm to profit the world and i think the focus is on 
um, this notion of, of profit. So I think that the real distinction here is understanding the notion of self. So for Yang Shu, it seems that the self is very much just the living organism, the one that disappears when it dies. Whereas for the others, the self is more integrated. It's the self as a family, as a nation that needs to be served, right? So um, you're promoting yourself and you're, you're, you know, by, by nourishing your nation and your family. But for, for Yang Chu, it seems like, no, he's just like, you know, the self is the, the body that would die. And so if you focus on um, just on the self as the thing that would, you know, die, then you realize that, that profit, like money, that's not the self fame, reputation, that's not the self, that's all stuff going on in other people. And so if everybody just focused on sort of preserving the self and not doing this thing where, look, you and I will go into battle, one of us may die, but the others may gain. And we're making calculations that aren't really about the self, but we're about this, you know, like larger group and, you know, I'm going to risk my body so that you might gain. Right. And so we just said, you know, no, look, if everybody just focused on themselves and said, look, I'm not going to risk, you know, my fingers so that you might have a better reputation or a better, you know, a, a better house. None of that matters. Right. None of that is the self. And so it seems like there might be an integration here between each one for himself and despising of things which are not the self. They're not the biological organism mm -hmm. that could die um, and the valuing of life. And those things can be kind of integrated when it's pushed this way, put this way. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Yeah, um, I, I think your argument is probably very similar to uh, uh, Feng Yulan's argument mm -hmm. goes yeah. through the history. So probably naturally you will go this way. You know? yeah. I assume you develop this idea by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Pim, please. Going off on a different tangent, in a way this is, uh, reminds me of, certain concepts about how a democracy is supposed to work. That individuals have inalienable rights and you're supposed to look out for your own interests, each person. And the idea is that your rights and interests should not violate other people's rights or interests. And uh, in a way, one can read this passage uh, I think from that from that point of view, uh, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. I, I think I have a similar thinking. I kind of think about this kind of a philosophy is like you know, free market and the same as the democracy, the prototype of the democracy and the free market, but it's not being further developed during the time. Uh, Joe and Mark, Joe. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it's actually, this question is for Penn. Uh, actually, Penn, I know that you presented on a philosopher, and I'm trying to recall his name, um, that spoke about how profit perverts incentives and perverts the way we think about, and I think you presented on him around in November or December. I'm just trying to recall the name, uh, if you can recall it offhand. Oh, can you uh, say it again? So profit, what, the profit what, perverts all like incentives for people, like essentially it destroys communities. Um, it was one particular philosopher. I, I can try and look it up. But I just wanted to see if you knew off oh. because it seems like, do you, do you remember Jason? Is that talk about the utopia? Oh, yeah. you hope, well, uh, yeah, I'll it's try. I can do. try and I can try and look it up. It, it's fine. Yeah, it's no problem. Yeah, uh, Pin, you can think about it because you can okay. just go through your presentation <laughs> last year, which about five or six. So, <laughs> okay, uh, Mark, please. Yeah, I wanted to um, agree with a couple of Jason's earlier formulations um, <laughs> about um, Yang Zhu's uh, kind of being the opposite of Mosa. Although I perceive that a little bit differently than Jason does, I think that's a good characterization. And also the, the criticism of Yang Zhu often just focusing on one side of his philosophy, but not the other. But I think Karen said something that was a little bit even more profound and I'm kind of curious how she got this because I've seen from other sources, um, Yang Zhu really, my understanding is that I didn't read it. Well, yeah, I did kind of get this in the late 
but I've mostly seen it from secondary sources. There's a real focus on the person as a healthy physical organism, as opposed to a social entity or prestige or wealth or fame, something like that. It's a real focus on health in Yangzhou, um, which um, I think is a uh, is kind of important and uh, it makes him a little bit different than Epicurus, actually. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm I'm impressed that that Karen figured that out, and I'm kind of wondering how she did that. Yeah, um, uh, 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 thank you, Mark. You know, remember last year you sent me a, a video about this Yangzhou, and that's a very good one. And it's talk about this one, like uh, taking care of self. And then first, I try to find out the video. The video is gone. Okay. And the secondary, I try to search on the uh, scholar uh, uh, paper about uh, this about uh, Yangzhou related to health body. I don't find, okay, I don't find, well, probably I didn't do enough research, but that's the other side. I totally agree. And I put in our discussion, you know, I know you are interested on in that. And I also very interested on this part, but you know, probably today we only have the time to talk about on the political side, not on the health side, you know. Can, can I just say very quickly where I got it from is just from the, just the passages in the chapter where okay. where the first principle is everybody for himself and then when it's worked out he talked about things like uh hair skin <laughs> you know <laughs> and so it, it, for people for philosophies where you sort of don't even identify the self with the body it, you, you know that wouldn't be the thing you would talk about um That's right. so so it just made me think maybe he's really and and to say because oftentimes everybody for himself is everybody accumulate all you can and the point here is not stuff in fact he, he says that you know stuff is not important it's not reputation it's not you know you know try and promote yourself in your company to get high up as you can it's you know um why would i risk my skin why would i risk my hair and so if if the focus is just on the you know the biological self almost the thing that could die um then it just made me think that that would be a way of integrating the two principles because um and so that would that would make sense that then there would be a focus on health, right? Because you want to preserve what really matters, right? Which is is uh, you know the the continuation of this sort of conscious self, um, rather than accumulation of because you know gaining stuff takes risks. You risk your hair, you risk your skin to try and gain wealth, especially in this time and prestige. All right. Uh, thank you, Karen. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. So we have a lot of hands up. So I will suggest we. Uh, uh, I probably have a, a, a few slides to go through. So uh, uh, please uh, make it a uh, uh, comment. So probably hold your comment a, a while and then just ask question. Uh, while is that? Hi. Um, all right, I'll be very quick. Uh, yeah, I just wanted, I, I think just to piggyback off what Karen shared, um, when I, I read this, the first thing that came to mind is not uh, necessarily, you know, a participant in market forces, but maybe, you know, uh, for someone who, who fulfills both of these, these ideas, you know, I can see uh, friends and people I've known in the past who still are, like joined alternative political communities, maybe some of them were kind of like anarchist bent who, essentially were there for themselves but also you know there's a strong sort of like anti-materialism and a valuing of, of all life so uh, i just want to share that it's interesting the different ways that you can read this uh thank you very much yeah thank you thank you yeah thank you uh uh alex please yes i have a question regarding the um this slide um the the world would be in perfect order that is a uh is that a is that an uh actual is that for mentions what what he what he um i mean what i'm trying to say is what he thinks about uh yang Ju or yang Ju actually said that on the world uh, i think the, okay here you take the tian xia zi yu, okay okay technically we should yeah in the perfect order i think that's the right translation and the, this word is from is okay that's the account from this okay and okay. this is talking about they have the group of people in the ancient time okay they believe so okay so that's okay. the word 
Okay, Lie Zi, a book, okay, probably being forged much later time, okay. So he has one chapter talking about Yang Zhu, okay, and this, this chapter has one paragraph talking about in old time, okay, that means a few hundred years before, they have a group of people, they believe so, doing this, the world was in perfect order. So that's I, the, the, the second. Yeah, second comment I have is actually, um, you know, the Confucius idea of senti fa fu, uh, senti, senti fa fu, so zi fu mu, right? Mm -hmm, Meaning that, yeah. you know, your, your, your life is given uh, uh, from your parents and that you need to protect yourself at all costs in order to, to serve your, uh, in order to be filial to your parents. So this actually kind of, um, uh, similar to to Yang Zhu because Yang Zhu says I wouldn't even plug a hair to do whatever <laughs> right so in a way isn't it, it I can't I find that a little bit a little bit even though it's coming from different ideas but preserving yourself is actually one of the things that that Confucius said as well what do you think yeah, I, I agree with you but uh, uh, I agree with you yeah because protect yourself your body like uh, my daughter will ask me why Chinese, this Chinese has a tattoo, okay, than a Western, okay. So I say, wow, that's a Confucius teaching, right? Because your body is belong to your parents. If you have a tattoo, you have to ask your parents and your parents say, no, so <laughs> don't do it. So uh, that, I think that's the reason, yeah. Uh, uh, Oga? Okay, so I, um, I um, first of all, I uh, first of all, I don't know almost anything about Asian philosophy, and I came here to learn. But what I know about all ancient texts, that meaning of some words was actually absolutely different, even when they translate Bible. It's uh, sometimes there is discussions that this particular word could mean absolutely different, not what we right now um, think about it. So my question is about what maybe there is um, mistranslation of uh, what profited that single hair they could have profited the world. Maybe there is something about detachment from the world, about like monks, like yogas, like, I'm not sure about China, but probably detaching from the world and not valuing it at all. So I should not profit the world because there is it has no value. Only my personal experience and my uh, way to understanding and maybe enlightenment or whatever has value, but world and everything that it possesses does not. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, th thank you for uh, mentioning this one. You talk about the world, yeah. Um, the, uh, the text here, right? The, if you have the word for myself, I'm not going to take it. That's the uh, word word uh, translation. So, you know, and then uh, let's move on. Um, okay, so I'm going to, so that's the first stage. And the second stage, okay, formula is talking about, I just quote because that uh, other translation and are different. So I just quickly quote from Tao Te Ching, chapter 44, okay. And then you talk about, you can see the change from the uh, two principle, talk about for myself, and uh, then uh, take care of your body. Uh, the, uh, the, things, uh, the body is more important than the things. That means, uh, just like Karen said, okay, one is individual. Okay, I'm not going to help uh, uh, outside. I don't want to take from outside. And then the fame, the money, the uh, reputation, uh, house, car are not important. All important is myself, my body, this physical body. That's first stage, okay? You can call it a selfish individualism. If you want to call it a recluse, if you want to call it a, a selfish egoism, and whatever you want to call, that's a Yang Zhu, uh, Feng Yulan, this book called the first stage. The second stage, let's use Dao De Jing, okay? Uh, 
is uh, let me read down the chapter 44 and uh, uh, some uh, paragraph. Reputation of reputation or life. Okay, Lao Tzu is asking this kind of question. Reputation or life, to which do you feel dear real? Life or wealth, which do you want more? Gaining or lo losing? Okay, I think he's talking about gaining fortune and losing your time, your life. Which do you worry about? Okay, so that's, of course, the, in, I think a lot of people are in the Tao Te Ching reading uh, chapter. I don't want to quote too many, but that's one of the uh, idea in Tao Te Ching is talking about. Basically, talk about the fame, okay, the wealth, and then which one are more important? Okay, so let's ask this kind of question. And I don't think I have to provide the answer. And I assume we know, you know what uh, Lao Tzu's answer on this. So that's the second stage uh, for your line is mentioned. And uh, then, third stage, uh, I just pick up the, uh, just pick some of the text to read. So, yeah. You know, so we, we will have time to uh, discuss whether or not you agree or disagree from your lands argument. In the, <coughs> sorry, in the Zhuangzi, and uh, this one I quote from the chapter two. Uh, remember last year we talked about the Kuk Din. Okay, I think so that's the chapter. The translation is fundamental for the cultivation of life. So that's in the chapter, uh, I think it's the second chapter, Qi Wu, Yang Sheng Zhu. Uh, is that chapter four? Okay, uh, in the chapter. Yeah, it's four. not the second. Second is Qi Wu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, There's yeah, a chapter it's four. Either yang, the yang third or fourth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yang Sheng Zhu, right? The fundamental for the cultivation of life. Okay, I think that's a good translation. Okay, um, uh, that's at the very beginning. If you remember, that's the cook thing. Uh, the, the 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 cook uh, the cut the uh, ox. Okay, that's the story. But at the very beginning. That's the writing from Zhuangzi. There is a limit to our life, but to knowledge, there is no limit. It is dangerous to pursue after what is unlimited with what is limited. So you have to know in the Taoism teaching, they are against knowledge, okay, learning too much. So here he's talking about at the very beginning, talk about our life is limited, but the knowledge is unlimited. So you use your limited life to pursue what is unlimited, okay? It's dangerous. So that's the very first uh, sentence in this chapter. When do something good, beware of reputation. When you do something evil, be, be aware, uh, beware of punishment. Follow the middle way and take this as your constant principle. Then you can preserve your health, secure your life, take care of your parent and live for a long time. Okay. So basics, that's the teaching in Zhuangzi. All right. Talk about, first talk about knowledge and your, uh, I think it's during that time when you talk about knowledge, the purpose of knowledge is working for the government. So basically talk about your life is limited and you pursue this unlimited thing, it's dangerous. And then he's talking about not only when you're not doing, try to avoid doing evil because you don't want to get punishment. You also avoid doing something good because you want to, don't want to gain the reputation. So that reflects the idea, okay? Beyond good and the evil, okay? So he want to be, you know, uh, use your own standard. That's my interpretation, you know? So, uh, this kind of, it's hard to, uh, to labor just one word, but basically that represent Zhuangzi's idea. And of course, Zhuangzi has much more. I don't include all of this, but you know, that's the idea of uh, uh, the later Taoism and the uh, Feng Yulan call it the third stage of the Taoism. Uh, Pin, you probably have something to say. Uh, yeah, uh, I just wanna offer a slightly alternative uh, translation of the Dangerous. Okay, please. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would say uh, bound for bound for failure. You mean the oh, oh okay. Fine. Few, few, I would say futile. Yeah, futile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I also don't think dangerous is a good word. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I I will translate as a stupid. Okay. So you know, it's a stupid oh, yeah. behavior. 
Yeah, that, that's the problem. I would, yeah, that, that's the problem. I was. Uh, James, you have any comment? I can think of two things about uh, the reward about about reputation. Uh, if you have a reputation, people will be interested in what kind of goods you have in your house. Uh, in other words, uh, they might be interested in robbing you if your reputation is wealthy, right? And uh, if you, uh, the, there's this syndrome, uh, I think it's rich athlete syndrome. You get, uh, you get uh, uh, a job, you know, with a very high salary all of a sudden when you've been fairly poor before and you come from modest means. Uh, it's all of a sudden everyone wants to be your best friend. You don't have any uh, kind of like uh, limits to your social ability like you did before when you were uh, poor. So uh, there's just people that uh, want some of your money. So the, the reputation can actually be a big danger for individuals. They they become they win the lottery one day and then two days two <laughs> years later uh, they they're they're absolutely uh, pover impoverished again. Yeah, yeah. I think you 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 get the answer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, Alex, please. Yeah, I have a question regarding uh, the middle way, because <laughs> okay, exactly yeah. what, <laughs> the middle way is kind of hard to define, and I I'm not, I'm I guess Zhuangzi probably knows exactly what he's talking about. But uh, the middle way, do you uh, can you offer some more? Uh, opinion on that. Yeah, I think middle way is a very interesting way to 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 talk about. Yeah, because everybody talk about middle way, right? Confucius talk about middle way. Aristotle also talk about middle way. Zhuangzi also talk about middle way. Uh, Buddhism also talk about middle way, and that's a very big subject. I that's just that's just my opinion. Uh, the, I will talk about Aristotle talk about Aristotle talk about middle way. It's kind of use uh, your wisdom. Okay reason to find out the balance, okay? So I think that's Aristotle talking about. Confucius talk about middle way. He is a perfectionism. So he talk about the perfect, I mean, I'm not talking about geometric center. I'm talking about the perfect middle in between, okay? So that's what Confucius is talking about. And I ask Buddhism, something. Oh, yeah, uh, can, can you let me finish? Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah sorry, I, I didn't mean it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, Buddhism talking about, about, about the, that's a skillful means, okay? So depend on the situation, okay? So that's the middle way. Taoism middle way is very interesting. I think Taoism is kind of blur, okay? Not so serious, okay? It's okay, now, okay? So something like, the, according, either way, you know? Yeah, according, like, to the, according to Feng Yilan, right? He's, yeah. He mentioned in the document being useless is the best way. It's the mid. It's kind of like the middle way. Being I think that he talk. I think the between useful and the useless, right? Because of the story. Let me repeat the story if, in case you didn't read it, right? Basically, he's Zhuangzi with his disciple resting under a big tree. His disciple said, "Oh, that's a huge tree, right?" And the Zhuangzi said, "Because this tree is useless." So the tree can grow and never got cut down. Then the second day they stay in a friend's house. They want to treat, prepare the dinner for uh, Zhuangzi and his disciple. So the, the kids of the master, of the uh, 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 host uh, ask, uh, we have two goose, two geese, okay? Which one we should kill? And uh, the father said, oh, kill the one the, the quack, the, yeah, because they use Goose to uh, just like the dog with bark, right? When the people come, so the that goose is useless, so they kill for dinner. So the student as Zhuangzi, well, uh, you should be useful or useless. And the Zhuangzi say, I'm in the middle way, right? Between useful and the useless, because you the higher purpose is not be useful or be useless, be lazy or be have a contribution. The, the idea is I want the high score is I want to preserve my life. Okay, if if I'm if I be useful, I can uh, people if useless will be killed. I try to be useful. If useful, you know, useless will be killed. I try to be useful. Try to avoid the danger. I think that's kind of middle way. So you know that that's my un understanding of middle way. So we have a lot of hands up, but we also toward to the end. But I really want to go to the 
uh, spend some time to discuss whether or not you agree or disagree from your land. So uh, let's go from uh, Pin, Denise, Madeline, and Mark. Pin. Okay, yeah, uh, just want to answer from a different angle because Alex touched on a very interesting part of the text. The text, the, the actual text, the direct translation would be follow the path of do yeah. as the meridian, you can protect your body. Yeah. So what is do? Do is actually the, you know, in acupuncture, there are these pressure That's points, right. but the pressure yeah. points are connected by these paths. And do is the path that runs up and down your spine. So this is actually one of the earliest uh, textual references in Chinese text that, that appear to re refer to acupuncture. And also in Chinese uh, Taoist uh, practice of uh, meditation, they believe that when you reach a certain stage, you will feel literally feel this energy going up the Du path. Uh, some people may feel some tremendous heat or you know some some kind of sensation uh, that and once you you break through that path with this energy, it's uh, it promotes your 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 basically. Uh, build some kind of really strong defense against illness. So this, uh, this little passage can have many, many different kinds of very different interpretations or, so I just want to add that in. Yeah, um, yeah, Pin, yeah, that, that's correct. And uh, I should mention to uh, mention this one because I believe most of the translation is go to Pin's translation. Okay, either Chinese or English because they talk about the Chinese medicine, the acupuncture, okay. But I like Feng Yulan's translation because he is talking about the middle, right? If you cut the middle, so that he interpret as the middle way. But of course, I just have to let everyone know, most of translation or most of people interpret this one as the Chinese medicine. But I believe, that's a personal belief, Zhuangzi used Chinese, because this kind of concept probably already exists during that time. So Zhuangzi used this concept to talk about middle way, I, I think, but not necessarily right. So uh, well, we have a lot of hands up. Uh, we'll go from Denise, Madeline, Mark, and the vine. Okay, Denise, please. Um, yes, hi, Jason. Um, I will keep it short um, since I just came from another meetup about a book club on curiosity. I just have a little bit of reaction to the first part about the limit to our life, but to knowledge, there's no limit. Um, but I can understand when Jones mentioned this, it was centuries away from where real scientific discovery was even possible. I am just wondering, you know, as a um, consolation to people, right? You probably have a lot of intuitive curiosity about the world around you, maybe not to be consumed by that without really real means to explore or develop any uh, solutions or discoveries. Um, but then on the other hand, I don't know how deeply ingrained this um, general mindset is in the cultural aspect, because in the long run, or you know, if you put this in more recent times, right? It, the, the knowledge obviously is unlimited, the scientific discovery is unlimited. If you just feel content, then you know, you're know you essentially missing out. I, so, so I, I mean, just how do you interpret this in, in the original context versus in today's context, right? Roy, I try to read this also. I try, I'm trying to get a little bit sense of what is a cultural influence about his uh, general philosophy in the long span of the history. Yeah, uh, thank you, Denise. Yeah, that's a totally just, okay. I just, um, it, it's a long, 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 a big question, but uh, I just want to mention is that's just Taoism, Zhuangzi's teaching, which is totally different than Confucius' teaching. Confucius will ask you to pursue knowledge. That's a different situation. Yeah, but don't see this one as the only teaching. That's one of the teaching, but not that important for, not that popular compared to uh, Confucius teacher. Yeah. Uh, Mather, please. Yes, uh, thanks, Pin and Jason, for elucidating uh, the word middle, because <laughs> uh, I had been quite curious about that. I hadn't realized that it meant a vertical meridian. 
Uh, I was thinking of it more in, um, I think more in a um, kind of a pre-Taoist mythic sense of the earth as being the plastron, the lower shell of the turtle, yeah. and the sky being the upper shell, uh, the carapace, and then we beings, uh, the 10,000 things who are here in the middle, but that's kind of a horizontal middle. It's not a, uh, a vertical middle, like a spinal meridian. And I, I didn't know if the word middle uh, might also uh, be related to middle kingdom. Um, um, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure it's about kingdom. Because, okay, if you look at the words, okay, Yuan Du Yi Wei, Jing, Jing means vertical, okay? Wait, okay, Jing is vertical. So he's talking about vertical middle and uh, then on the body, yeah. I think the original meaning of Jing is when you have a fishing net, the main, the main um, thread of the, of the net are Jing and the smaller <laughs> ones that run orthogonal to the main ones are called our way. So this, uh, that's the original meaning of Jin. Okay, that's, uh, well, I, that, that's another big question we can, uh, uh, probably we should invite someone. I'm not good, not familiar with uh, Chinese medicine that much. So if somebody are interested in the Chinese medicine, I think that's one thing we probably can introduce in the philosophical way. Okay. So uh, Mark, please. Oh yeah, thank you. I wanted to address this question about middle a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I, I thought uh, Peter did a good job of talking about the, the commonality of this concept. I, I wanna point out a little bit of uh, cultural asymmet asymmetry in it. And that I think this concept is stronger in China than any place else, even though you do find it mm -hmm. in Buddhism as well. Because in the Taoist dialectic between yin and yang, it's very different than the ideas that come out of Persian philosophy, which gave rise to Christianity, Islam, and ultimately Marxism ideas like that, where you have a struggle between good and evil, progress and reaction, truth and falsity, etc. Whereas the, the, the Chinese, the Taoist concept of yin and yang, you're talking more about trying to achieve a balance between opposing forces. And when things are wrong, it's because they're out of balance. Whereas if you compare that to compare that to a Manichaean ideology like Christianity, Islam, Marxism, etc., you're more looking for purity. You're there, there's a you're looking for justice versus injustice, progress versus reaction, God versus Satan, proletariat versus bourgeoisie. You're not looking for balance. So you're going through a process of purification. It's a very different conception, and this is why I think one thing that makes uh, Chinese culture and philosophy very different than the rest of the world because in the middle, the concept of balance, I think is a lot stronger in China than in other cultures. That's all I have to say, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank you, yeah. And one day we probably will read the doc uh, doctrine of the uh, middle way, you know, that's a Confucius middle, you know, it's a another strong argument. Uh, Vai, please. Uh, thank you, Jason. I'll be quick again. Um, I just want to say the second part of this. I, I just, uh, you, uh, you know, said, hey, listen, how does it strike you? Are you, you know, what sort of comments might you have? Uh, and I just wanted to share in case this is resonating with anyone else. Um, I really struggle with the, the second blurb here, in part because I, I just sent a real profound like pessimism. Uh, this is partially, you know, the way I'm reading it in my own times, what it, what it, you know, the first time I read it, what it seemed to say to me is, you know, kind of keep your head down, don't make waves, um, you know, and, and you'll have, uh, you know, possibly a, a long life, you know, admittedly the middle way being kind of relative, uh, but, you know, the, it, it does read, you know, I think it's it, someone who saw it could, you know, read and say, okay, well, if I keep my head down, I don't make waves, I don't do too many good things, I don't do too many bad things, I'll be okay. Um, but certainly, you know, my experience during the last year and, and you know, uh, maybe many of y'all's as well uh, has been, and I think maybe life has always been this way, but yeah, you can follow a middle way, you can, you know, sort of stay in your lane, um, but there's no guarantee that, you know, uh, 
you'll have a, a life that's preserved or, or health or, you know, uh, security or be able to take care of your parents. So um, I in some ways appreciate the notion, but I also, you know, kind of wonder, you know, is, you know, was this even true in that time? Um, you know, maybe then escape in a, in a sense was a much, you know, easier option because we weren't as in connect, interconnected, but was escape really ever possible or was it always kind of, you know, a fantasy and a dream? So thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, well, that's that's a little bit my personal attitude, and I enjoy reading the uh, uh, ancient texts, uh, either Chinese or Western. Uh, the reason is this: because I think uh, you can see how the people react to the situation during that time. Okay, that's the part I'm interested. In. So. Uh, you asked a good question is, is that possible during that time? I think, I'm not sure it's possible or not possible. Okay, but I believe during that time, if you can imagine, there's a lot of war going on. And then that's, I, I assume the most, the people, the writer also here are not regular people. They probably the aristocrats, okay? They are at this upper middle class. So they are thinking about choice, right? I can go out to save the world or I can escape from the world, take care of myself. That's the choice. And how many doing this? Are they successful doing that? I really don't know. Probably I don't have much interest okay, about this, but I'm interested is how do they react it? That's an interesting way to think about. So that, that's just my, the reason I'm interested in doing this. And another thing is uh, your comment about is that guarantee? There's no guarantee. Yeah, I don't see any guarantee on the teaching. I like to use this example. Is Jiang Kai Shek, the dictator in Taiwan? He is a Christian. He is dedicated to Confucians. I don't think it guarantee him a good person. So you know, so doesn't matter how many good book you are reading, it not guarantee you be live a long life or be the moral person. But you know. But we still read it, so that's that's the po the point. Yeah, uh, Pin, please. Yeah, to kind of answer also, uh, <laughs> I, I would say Zhuangzi would say there is a higher level. So this is kind of like the entry level of, uh, <laughs> of what you yeah. should what you're achieving. Like there's a higher level where you don't. There's no good or bad or safe or danger, and you're completely liberated above that. And you're not even worried about that anymore. So I would say, yeah, Johnson will concede with you that uh, it's, yeah, you can do what you can, but there's no guarantee in life. But you should actually, the, the next level is you, you, you're not even worried about that. There's no good or bad in the world. Yeah, yeah thank you, Pim. That's a bring up to my uh, final uh, argument here. Okay, so today we are doing very good on time. Thank you, everyone, to make your uh, 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 speak short and uh, so we can go through. <laughs> so, okay, so let's summarize what uh, Feng Yulan's argument. And uh, either you agree or disagree, then that's the argument he has. Okay, I think it's interesting. He talked about three stages of the Taoism argument. First stage is Yang Zhu talking about the uh, desire to maintain one's personal purity, recruits and escape from the world. Just take care of yourself, okay? And the second stage, he talked about the Laozi, because you know this recruits idea uh, further develop as have the metaphysical background, which is looking for how to do it. That's come with so-called unchanging Tao. Okay, then they can reflect. I'm talking about second stage in the Laozi's region about the Wu Wei in the political. Okay. Uh, non-action, okay? And another concept for self-cultivation become a so-called pu, as a concept of uh, uncarved block, just like a wood you don't polish, keep your originality. So that's the second stage of the Lao Tzu. You can see they start to develop the uh, metaphysical background, okay? Try to understand why and uh, some rule and the develop on the political side which is Wu Wei, that if you in today's world, it will be the, this government will be the best government. So don't bother me. 
那 further on in the 装置装置 like pin talking about the text I show just entry level further develop the equalization of things equalization of life or death if I die you know it doesn't much matter okay and the further develop the, the, the social social um, uh, uh, angle so I'm an individual I also respect you are the individual you are a beggar homeless people you are the emperor you are the billionaire. There's no difference, okay? We respect each other as individual. So you, you use things, but don't be used by things. You don't get addicted to the name, the outside world you take yourself. So that's the development. If you look at these three developments, you find out interesting, right? At the first stage, the Taoism, think, thinking about the self, okay? So strong individual self and even being labor as selfish. But to the later time, the third stage becomes so totally selfless. Okay. So that's an interest development from the selfish or self totally selfness okay, to the selflessness. Okay. So I think that's from your line argue on this one. But of course you may not deserve, you may not agree on this one, but that's from your line's argument. So uh, I will quote the last sentence from Feng Yolan. Uh, he write before we go. His Feng Yolan's words here is from selfishness to selflessness. Okay, we may say that the early Taoists were selfish, yet in their later development, this selfishness become reversed and destroyed itself. Uh, the Chinese word they talk about si to wu si wu wo, okay, no self. I'm not sure the translation, I don't see the translation is perfect match because the concept of self in China or Chinese culture and the self is a little bit different. It's a big subject, okay. So I, as I put my own uh, interpretation, I will conclude, that's my own word. Okay, from self-reliance individualism. Okay, that's I believe the early Taoism, so-called Yangzhu, is a self-reliance individualism to the universalized individualism. Okay, and which is based on the selflessness. Okay, so that's my conclusion about the Taoism development. If I have to stick with the uh, three-stage development, so I will consider the first stage is I will focus on more self-reliance okay, and individual as an individual. And then the later part, like Zhuangzi, I will call it universalized individualism because I'm the individual, I consider everybody as an individual and we have no difference. Okay. So that's conclude for today. And then probably that's the time to, uh, we have five minutes. All right, to say you uh, agree, you disagree, and then uh, thank you, everyone. And if you have something to talk about, that's the time you know, to express or something, some question. Uh, um, Kevin, please. Yeah, Ping, you go ahead. Ping. Okay, um, I got a question about uh, uh, yes, yeah, self love and. Uh, in, I would say compared to um, Zheng, I said like uh, Confucius called one Se Sheng Qi, here's Qing Wu Zhong Sheng. If go to, that's uh, a funny English term would be that Zheng righteous is over, that's your life, it's not, uh, that's not the first priority. But here, I would say from uh, Yang Zhu, life's most important. So that's that's self that's recognize that, like before Confucius, you see the hierarchy, uh, I, the, from a uh, parent, dad, uh, and rulers, they are also first priority. And here come okay, I come a first priority. I'm serve myself better. I then I serve others. Then I also you know, I would say they say how also one uh, from a Hungarian. Um, uh, poem they say life's in process love is more expensive if it's freedom both can throw them away so that's kind of connection you know very interesting about life thank you 
Yeah, uh, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, we uh, here I just show different you know, philosophy on the uh, richness of Hanzhou school. So of course we uh, different. It's interesting to compare. Uh, who is that? Summit. Is that, is that, am I pronounced right? Summit. Yes, hi, good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to know, uh, because I've been uh, disconnected from this, uh, is it possible to post the uh, position, the location where this is gonna be uh, recorded or like the, to, to, ac to access yeah, it later? It's, yeah, it's recorded. And I think I already showed the group. If you go to the website here, okay. Uh, so, uh, hold on, did, did you don't see the screen. If you go to the website, okay, you should be able to, See it? Uh, I don't know. I lost it. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you go to the meetup page and then move down to the bottom, and then uh, you are able to see all the uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation and then uh, 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 the video and everything. Okay. Let me show one more time. Okay. So that's the page, that's the next week. Okay, remember next week, we're going to talk about school of names. Okay, when a white horse is not a horse. So if you go to this one, you go to the, this one. Okay, you click this one, you will see the uh, recorded video and the, the PowerPoint and the Sorry. future task. Yeah. Okay, so go to the page, yeah. So who's uh, next? Mark, please. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jason. I, I wanted to thank you for your uh, for your preparation, your presentation, and uh, I'm curious if you could just elaborate real briefly on um, your conception of the difference between the Chinese sense of self and uh, the American. I guess would be what you'd be most familiar with, sense of self. Okay, I just want to use the one word. One of my friends, he is American, and he uh, spent 20 years in. Uh, uh, China get a master degree in China. He claimed he wrote uh, 30,000 characters on his master uh, thesis in Chinese. So shows he's pretty good in Chinese. So he tell me privacy is very different. There's no word of privacy in Chinese. And when Chinese talk about privacy, uh, they talk about something embarrassing, you know, we should not talk about unlike in the Western talk about privacy, it's my own right. So, and one way to talk about, I think that I'd like to talk about this is the public and the private are different in Chinese concept, right? A common word, if people know Chinese, a few people know Chinese here, when we talk about gong and si, all right? Uh, when we talk about public, probably not, so-called, uh, uh, I think that's too, too difficult to, to explain. Uh, I, I don't wanna to spend too much time, but you know, uh, I think we will deal with this one. Uh, the, the, the concept of private self is different in, uh, when we see the case, we can further explain. Yeah. Uh, Pete, you probably have a better way to explain. Oh, not better, but just explore a little bit. It's a very interesting question. Yeah. Oftentimes I say- But, but you agree that's a big issue, right? That's a very, very different concept. Of a yeah, private. there are differences. So one way I think about it is in Chinese societies, individuals have rights, but the society as a collective has a right as well. And that right should be bigger, at least as big but probably more important than the individual's right. And the individual shouldn't, shouldn't extend it, its own individual right so much as to hurt the collective right. And I think in the US, there's a parallel concept. It's all like leg legally, a corporation is a legal person. So it's almost something like that. And, um, but, it's a complicated issue because famously Liang Qichao in the early 1900s wrote a famous essay saying that the Chinese traditionally only have personal virtues defined, but no public virtue. So we have si de, mei you gong de. And uh, this comes from the common way that we think is just ask what, if you yourself is doing the right thing, don't 
bother other people. So uh, just worry about yourself first instead of going across the street and tell your neighbor that they're doing something wrong. And uh, so you can, you can, it, it's, I think it's uh, not easy to run the dangers oversimplifying. In a way, we are more individual than the West and then in other ways we're less individual, but they're just different. Yeah, thank you. It, it's a, a complex subject. I just like to use an example, you know, uh, for the people who know Chinese. When we talk about gong and the si, right? Gong means the public, si means the private. The common words, we will say gong jia, okay? And the si will say si fang. So jia and the fang, that's the two concepts of family, okay? So when we think about the, the traditional Chinese family, that's a Three generations live together with your uncle. Or the, so that's one called Jia. Okay, that's a family. When Confucius talk about family, let's talk about hundreds of people. Fang, kind of like a room. Okay, that's your small family. Usually it's the parents and the young kids. Okay, so when people talk about si, which private, probably not the individual like I. Okay, it talk about the Fang, which is the room, your small family. When people talk about public, probably not as far as to your neighbor or to the foreign country. It's only the boundary party to your big family. Okay, so that's another way to explain the concept of private and the public. Okay, but of course that's just one side. But you know, that's it. Yeah. Uh, so we have times up, and thank you very much. And we have Alina, and you have a last word. Please say something good. So thank you. <laughs> All right. Yes, please. Uh, I'm just going to mute one device and talk. Yes, please. You have final words. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, you are echoing. Are you, are you ready? So going, going to the final words. Yes. <laughs> we are waiting. Okay. Uh, so basically, what what I've gotten is that. There is so many interpretations and translations of uh, the old texts. And for instance, one of the um, interpretations that I found on Yang Zhu, and uh, mm. I really like that particular line about the hair. So it says that when asked whether he would surrender merely one hair from his body in order to save humanity, Yang Zhu replied, that mankind is surely not to be helped by a single hair. So, and then if you stay with that, it doesn't mean necessarily that he was so ambivalent and didn't care. Yeah. It's just, uh, they may be a bit more than a single hair to, to resolve it or to, to create what you want to create in the world. So just- uh, All right. <laughs> yeah good uh, yeah uh, thank thank you thank you so much and then right now is the four minutes over time and that's great and the next week we talk about school of names and then uh uh hope we do you our reading and hope this kind of uh, series interests you and thank you everyone and then see you next week okay so if you have a question just send a comment on the uh that page and usually I will read it or any request and again I just want to announce one more time and if you have some idea and then you, or you want to help you want to contribute or you are a friend you think that's a good to uh, have a presentation welcome to contact me and this group belongs to everyone yeah thank you see you next week thank you Jason happy new year Happy, Happy New Year. Thank you, Jason. All right. Happy New Year. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Ken. All right. Bye.